Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I am the C-H-A-L-L, and today, Chal Chats, Donk Strawbers. This is it, the big January transfer window video. Uh, the transfer window is literally open the first day of the window today. Um, and yeah, this is it. We are talking about January. Now, we have got, in, in principle for this video, uh, we've got uh, five different positions. We've got centre-back, centre-midfield, attacking midfield, wing and striker. And we're going to be going through three different options per position. So overall, it's essentially a top 15. Uh, initially, it was going to be a top 20. However, we decided to make it even more ruthless and deliver a top 15. Uh, that's how the formula will be for January window videos going forward uh, for the summer. Uh, we'll be looking at three to five players per every position. So um, that's going to be an even bigger video. We might have to do a series for that one. But for January, it'll be one big video um, in the end. So we're going to go through the three players in each position. It could be a mixture. It could be one permanent and two loanee options. It could be two loanees and one permanent option. It could be all permanent, could be all loans. You just don't know until you watch this video. Uh, now then, before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Click the cash bell to never shoot your video. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers. Let's get there as soon as possible, please. And for now, let's get straight into this one. Let's talk about the first position on the list, which is centre-back. Now, the reason why I've gone with centre-back uh, is because, obviously, uh, Senior came back from injury a few weeks ago. Long's still out. Woods is out again. Anderson's now out, um, but should be all right, for, I think, for the MK Dons game, which is today when you're watching it. Obviously, Olawu is still available. Faulkner's just come back. So you need that extra player that's going to fill that centre-back role. Obviously, there's been talk about Jay McGrath from St. Patrick's Athletic in Ireland. Uh, however, I want to deliver three of my own options. So let's have a look at the three options I've chosen as potential centre-backs. So we're kicking off with a loan deal. And this is for West Ham United, Caelan uh, Cissé. Uh, now, he is a centre-back. He's a battling, imposing centre-back. Uh, naturally in the centre-back role, but can also operate in a midfield role, so a bit like Owen Bailey. Uh, he's been compared to a mould of Declan Rice as a player. Now, Declan Rice, as, pe as people already know, excels in his defensive duties. He has great positional awareness. He has the IQ to make calculated football decisions on the pitch uh, at the right moment. And he's just a guy who I think has got a bright, bright future in this game at the top level. Now, Kalen Sesse is the mould of Declan Rice, and I think he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him with massive potential. He made his senior debut um, in the Europa Conference League group phase for West Ham, also making the bench against Tottenham in the Premier League. So he's got experience of being in a senior match day squad. And I think that Sesse would be a fantastic loan deal. I think he would suit perfectly uh, the way we play at the moment. Um, so Sesse, for me, would be a great loan deal and I think it'd be a great loan option for the club next up is the experienced Joe Grayson from Gateshead remember that club we signed Owen Bailey from well we're at it again this would be a permanent deal now he works especially in a back three system especially on the left hand side of a three centre back trio but you can play him on the uh, left hand side of the back four so it can work in a back four system as well uh, but with Gateshead he's played currently as the left hand side of a back three uh, he's very good on the ball, relatively experienced. Now, he specialises in box defending. So that will help us deal with two of the main pieces of threat that we've had this season, which is set pieces and crosses in the box. He's a box defender. So that ticks the box already as someone who can deal with crosses in the box because that's one thing we've really struggled with this season. And I think he highlights that perfectly. Uh, so he'd be a fantastic addition at 24 as well. Is he's still a few years away from his prime. So you've still got a few years of growth left into him until he gets to his prime age. Uh, he can really let his experience show towards the next crop of youngsters coming through. So Joe Grayson, for me, would be a very smart signing. And finally, for your centre-backs, we have George Langston, 21 years old from Eastleigh. Uh, he can operate in a centre-back partnership in a back four or on the left side centre-back in a back three system. So again, like Grayson, similar type of centre-back. He's a very reliable asset. Uh, he demonstrates sustainable and constant leadership traits and also develops 
um, and showcases passionate performances. He's a very passionate player. And he could be an absolute bargain for League Two, winning multiple Man of the Match awards for Eastley. And I think he's been probably, arguably, one of Eastley's best players this season so far. And for me, I think it'd be an absolute no-brainer to go for George Langston. I think that he's, again, he's a very strong physical centre-back. He wins the duels very, very well, wins the aerial duels comfortably. He's a very strong tackler, good blocker of the ball and displays all those modern defensive traits as well. So I think that he's got the modern and the classic. He's like a mashup of, of vintage and modern centre-back combined. So, And he's a real leader as well. I've, I've seen the highlights from Eastley and I've seen his press conferences when he's spoken after games. He's a proper, proper leader. 21 years old as well. So he would be a nice young centre-back with plenty of experience already under his belt. And I think he would tick a lot of boxes in the centre-back area for sure. And I think that Langston would be an absolutely fantastic signing for the club. Now then, we move on to the centre of midfield. Now, the centre of midfield has been an area that we've lacked, especially with the injury to Westbrook for the end of the season. We've had multiple different injuries. We've got Sam Stroud and Brown, the youngster, coming back, but he will need a loan out. Ravenel's out for the year. Uh, Bailey is a defensive midfielder. However, he's being portrayed at centre-back at the moment, mainly because of the uh cover we need at center back but obviously he's playing he plays in midfield as well uh but for me i think that we we need that center midfielder we need that center midfielder we need that brute or we need that playmaker and we need a, a range of midfielders so i've got a range of midfielders on this list so here is the list of three center midfielders that i've got potentially for january so first up, we've got on loan Cameron Humphreys from Ipswich Town. Now, this guy is 20 years old, known best for his running, his athleticism. He drives well up the pitch. He's a physical, uh, deeper playmaker. Uh, he can get about the pitch. He can cover a lot of ground. He can be a real link in the midfield, link the play from back to front. In my opinion, he's one of the brightest young talents in the football league with centre midfielders. He's got the potential to become a real playmaker in the central area behind the attackers and attacking midfielder in a three-back system. Or he can be the playmaker in a partnership with a holding midfielder in the 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 formation as the deeper playmaker. Now, he has experience this season in the EFL Cup with Ipswich, but he needs a loan deal and leave one or two to gather more experience, in my opinion. And I think that Cameron Humphreys has got the capabilities to, de to really develop on this senior loan deal. And I think that he's someone we need to be seriously looking out for. And I feel like Cameron Humphreys, for me, would be an excellent, excellent loan signing. Now then, the non-league Rodri has made the list, the final 15. Um, now, this guy, I know AFC Fowl fans will hate me for, for wanting him, but I, I want him. I want him at my club. Taylor O'Kane, uh, 18, defensive midfielder. He can play at centre-back as well. Um, last year's Academy Player of the Year for AFC Fowl. Uh, he's already made multiple appearances in the senior team in the National League this season. He's a simple player. He plays it simple. He doesn't overcomplicate it sometimes. Uh, he doesn't overcomplicate it, mainly in possession as well. He favours shorter passes, simpler passes, keeps the play ticking along nicely. He settles the tempo in the middle of the park. Um, and he's often, his IQ is above his age. This is the great thing with Taylor O'Kane. He's a step or two above the rest and above the opposition as well. And he can think ahead of the opposition. That's the best thing here with Taylor O'Kane. He's a very much an over an overtime thinker. He, he thinks ahead of his time. So for me, we've got the chance to get a real bright, bright prospect on our hands. And I think it's a deal would be silly not to take either in January or the summer. And I seriously, especially if Fardell will get relegated this year from the National League, I think this is a deal we absolutely need to take, in my opinion. I could not stress that even more. And this is what we mean by improving our recruitment strategy. We need to think long-term with some of the players we sign. Obviously, we're linked to Conor Carty on loan from Bolton. We're linked to Jay McGrath from St. Pat's. If you want another long-term player, you bring in Taylor O'Kane alongside an experienced midfielder. So for me, I think Taylor O'Kane is an absolute must. Finally then, for your centre midfielders, we've got Mamadou Sissoho on loan from Manchester City. Now, this guy is only 18, but he's a very exciting talent. Uh, I call him an unsung hero in the academy at Manchester City. Uh, he can score, even though he's a defensive player. He's got experience training with Rodri, so he's learned under some fantastic top-tier talent. 
He's got a natural exuberance about him um, that you usually sort of associate with attacking-minded players. Uh, he's a proper commanding, tenacious ball-winning midfielder. He's a proper ball winner. Um, he's a brute. He's the brute that we need. Uh, so you've got a real range here. You've got a, a real defensive midfielder uh, with a lot of potential at 18 years old. You've got a deeper. You've got a playmaker that can operate in deeper areas on loan from Ipswich. And then you've got this ball winner, this brute at just 18 years old that's got the capabilities of developing on a senior loan deal for the rest of this season. And I think Sosoho needs that loan deal for the rest of the season. There's a few names I could have put on this list for centre midfield. I could have gone with Jack Henry Francis. Again, another brute from Arsenal, um, from the Arsenal 21s. But I think Sosoho just takes it for me in terms of the way he delivers the ball, the way he links up the play from back to front, the way he links between the defence and the attack, the way he thinks like an attack-minded player, even though he's a defensive midfielder and a ball winner. And he's got a real tenacious ability about him. So, for me, again, this would be a loan deal would be silly not to take. So for me, I think this is another fantastic deal for the club. Now then, we move forward into the attacking midfield. Now with the attacking midfield, the reason why I've gone with that, with Marsh still being injured, and we still need to transition Hurst into an attacking midfielder. However, it seems like after Mansfield uh, just recently, we're going away from this three-back system a little bit. So you need an attacking midfielder that can be adaptable on the wings as well. So I've been very, very careful as to who to suggest uh, for this particular uh, role. So here is the three names that I've chosen as attacking midfield options for Doncaster Rovers in January. So let's start off then with someone who can adapt on the left and also up front on loan from Aston Villa. Of course, we have experience learning from Aston Villa. Jacob Ramsey, no needed to name. Of course, Amari Kellyman. Uh, he's a very effortless mover of the ball. That's what I like about him. He's got some flair and zest about him. He's an amazing personality from character references in press conferences and news articles. Wonderful, kind, down-to-earth character from what I've seen from Academy videos as well. He's got a real confidence and flair and, you know, showmanship about his play as well. He manipulates the ball in tight pockets of spaces, uh, operates anywhere across the front line as well, so he can operate on either wing. Uh, he made his professional debut back on the 31st of August this year in a 3-0 UEFA Com Europa Conference League victory over Hibernian. He assisted Leon Bailey's goal. And he's just got this real character about him on the pitch, as well as being a kind character off the pitch. He's a, he, he'd be fantastic with the fans. He'd be fantastic with the supporters. Uh, but on the pitch, it's not just about what he does with the supporters, it's about what he does on the pitch as well. And for me, he delivers a real confidence about his play. And I think he's one of the most exciting talents in the Aston Villa youth, in my opinion. And I think a senior loan is exactly what he needs right now. Our second attacking midfield option, again, someone who can play in the attacking midfield, all plays on either wing. And it's someone who could be a very smart signing if we play this correctly, especially with Grant's old relationship with Hull City. It is Harry Vaughan at 19 years old. He's played over 120 minutes of championship football this season so far. He needs a senior loan, though, further down the football league. Now, let me give you some stats about this guy. Over Just over 76% pass completion, capped to under-19s level for the Republic of Ireland, player of the month for April 2023 in the championship. He's a hard worker. He runs for 90 minutes, playing centrally or on the left-hand side normally, but can play on the right as well. Very technical player, great on the ball, quite direct, never takes any BS, likes to run, has a lot of pace, and he's an absolute machine on the ball. In possession and out of possession, he's an absolute machine, works his socks off, works his heart to the bone, absolute hard worker. And someone who would run for the badge of Doncaster Rovers. And that's the key thing here. We need people that are going to run for the badge on the shirt, for the legacy they carry, worn by the likes of Alec Jeffrey, James Coppinger and Harry Gray. So you need those kind of players. And for me, Harry Vaughan ticks that box to an absolute T. Uh, and I think he'd be a fantastic signing in that position. Finally, then, for attacking midfielders, again, someone who can also play on either wing. He is suited perfectly as an attacking midfielder behind or just off the strikers. So if we are going to go with the three-back system, he's preferably the signing you would make. This is Stephen Wynn of Gateshead. Uh, now, the, he can play on either wing, as we've said, but he can mainly play as an attacking midfielder, and that's his, his best suited position. He's one of the smartest passing players in the National League, in my opinion. Uh, at least 10 goals and 10 assists in 20 plus games in the National League. A very, very classy player as well. He's got a real confidence and a real class and grace about him on the pitch. 
He's fun to watch. He's got great technical ability, fantastic creativity. He's a catalyst for attacking play. He's really central in the final third, and he can improve the quality in the final third as well. And I think Stephen Weir would be a fantastic signing, again, with that Gateshead connection with uh, Owen Bailey signing in the summer. I think that Stephen Weir would be a fantastic acquisition for the squad, and I really can't rate this guy high enough. Next up then, we have the wings. Now, of course, Tyler Roberts is not getting much game time, so you think whether we send him back or not. Uh, Satona is obviously out on loan until the middle of January at Boston. Um, obviously, you've got Hurst who can play in that position, Molly in that position, Taylor who comes back in January. So you've got the opportunity to bring in maybe a loney or some permanent young winger. Uh, so you've got the opportunity here with, uh, with this position. So here is three wingers that I'll be looking at in January. So first up then, Armanio Cozia Dubri on loan from Arsenal. Now, I cannot rate this guy high enough. He's usually deployed on the right. Uh, so, so you'd have to maybe move, look at moving Molyneux to the left-hand side or look at playing him on the left-hand side. Or you develop Cozia Dubri's left-hand side as well. So you've got the ability to interchange here. Uh, now, he possesses excellent close control. Uh, he's absolutely rapid in pace on the ball. Uh, and in possession, he can play as a traditional winger or he can play as an inverted winger. He's been known as the next Bukayo Saka or the second coming of Bukayo Saka. And that is a very, very good sign about this guy's potential. He makes very good well-timed runs. He receives the ball. He's a very impressive dribbler. I've noticed that um, specifically. He's a very, very impressive dribbler. Um, and for me, he would be an absolutely awesome acquisition for the club. Uh, now, he will benefit greatly, in my opinion, from a senior loan deal. He will benefit amazingly at a senior loan down at a club like ours. And I think that he'd be perfect for a senior loan deal. So for me, I think this would be an absolute no-brainer in terms of a loan player. And I think you've got serious, serious potential with this guy. And I think that it's worth tapping into for sure. Next up is a permanent deal. And this guy's out of contract in the summer. However, this could be a very tough purchase to make because Chesterfield fans absolutely love him and i think it'd be a very hard deal to do but if you offer the right money you get the player armando dobra of chesterfield uh he's one of in my opinion the national league's most gifted attacking players uh, he alleviates pressure he pushes team high up the pitch he's key in attacking movement he's a gifted dribbler he works hard out of possession as well so he's a constant worker every single time He's a long-term core squad player as well. He's only 22, so you've got the potential to push him even, even more. And he's a real producer of top-quality, world-class moments. We saw it in the playoff final uh, in, you know, in that defeat to Notts County. We saw it during the season last season. We've seen it during this season as well. He's an absolute machine on the wing. And for me, I think he's just that one guy that just exuberates um, press. He's a real pressing player. And I think he just exuberates confidence on the pitch. And being an international as well at senior level, I think he got the call up to Albania not too long ago. So for me, getting that international call just makes him that senior and gets that notice to the club as well on an international scale from the Albanian lot. So I think that for me, I think Dobra would be an absolute no-brainer if the right money was offered. But this would be a very tough one because Chesterfield, I'm sure, will keep their hands on him for as long as they possibly can. And finally, for your wingers, we've got one of the stars of the Spurs Academy, Iago Santiago, the Spain international youth. Now, he is a versatile uh, attacking player. He can play across the front line as the attacking midfielder or on the wings, but mainly he is a winger. Mainly on the left, which I think is the position in terms of wingers, if we're looking for a winger, is mainly what we need because obviously it's Tony being loaned out, telling not back until mid-January, hopefully. And with Hurst not getting game time, you'd assume you bring in someone to give him competition. And, you know, with someone being majority on the left, I think that Santiago would definitely deliver that. Now, he's had at least, he's got six goals and four assists in nine Premier League two games at the very least at this moment. Uh, quite slick. Uh, he's a decent technician on the ball and off the ball as well. He's very quick on his feet. He's got great balance for a youngster as well. He's only 20 years old, but great balance for a 20-year-old. He makes great forward runs as well. And that's someone you need. You just need someone who's going to make those great forward runs and get into the final third area. So for me, I think this sign is an absolute no-brainer in terms of a loan deal for a winger. And I think that Santiago would be a perfect acquisition for the club. 
So then finally, we have your strikers. And this has been one of the main positions that people have wanted to see in the window. With Griffiths gone, Lavery still injured uh, for now. Uh, Miller out for the rest of the season. You've got Fal, who's a loan deal, and you've got Joe Ironside. And then behind that, you've got Jack Goodman. Obviously, there is rumours of Conor Carty coming in um, on loan from Bolton. However, we don't know that for sure until it gets announced. But I'd be very interested to see what happens with that one. So then, let's go into our three strikers for January. So we've got two loan deals and a permanent. So starting off with Marco Mahoney on loan from Brighton. Now, this guy is a very impressive young player. Uh, named FII Under-17 Player of the Year in 2022, likened to and described as the next Evan Ferguson. Now, according to TargetScouting.com, they describe O'Mahoney as deceptively mobile for his size at more than six feet tall with a broad frame. Yeah, in my opinion, he's also got great hold-up play. He's got the chance and the opportunity to deliver incisive passes towards teammates, uh, especially further up the pitch. Uh, he's got an instinct to be in the right place at the right moment to apply the right finish. Uh, so he's, he's a real um, decisive finisher. He's a real uh, close thinker of a finisher. He chooses one to pick his moments, uh, which I think is fantastic. Uh, he's a hard worker. He's a brilliant concentrator on the ball. He's a concentrator in training as well from, from several news articles and character references. And for me, I think Marco Mahoney would deliver that kind of professionalism for a young lad. And I think if you put him with some of the experience, lads, I think he learns a lot. Uh, from this Dunkster Rovers squad. So I think that a senior loan would be perfect for Marco Mahoney. I think that would give him the real push to try and make the, the step up at some point into first team level for Brighton. Next up is another loan player, Callum Marshall from West Ham. His current goal rate is equal to or exceeding Harry Kane at Bayern Munich. I'm not even joking. Go look at the stats and come back to me on that one. Uh, because trust me, I'm telling the truth on that one. He's directly contributed to at least 63% of West Ham's Academy's league goals. He's a predominantly left-footed player, uh, but he can develop his right, and this is what senior loans can do, develop players' uh, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, he's comfortable playing in any position across a front three, which is perfect. Uh, unselfish with his players and attacker as well, so he's very uh, much a team player as well as an individual moment creator. Uh, he makes intelligent runs through the opposition's defence. He utilises his great pace very well to drive the attacking phases of play. And he's often looking to pass into channels and switch the play. Again, it develops under that team player mentality. And that's what I like about Callum here. He's a top scorer at youth level. But I'll tell you something now, he's a real team player. And we've seen that from the highlights at West Ham this season. He's a real team player, unselfish works with his teammates very, very well. And I think he developed a real sense of teammate and leadership on loan at Dunkster Rovers as well. So I think that Callum Marshall, for me, would be a very, very smart loan signing and someone we should definitely take an eye on. And with his goal record this season, I seriously think a senior loan deal is what he needs to take his career to the next level. And I think he's got a chance to try and make it and break into that West Ham team at some point down the line. And finally, your last player on this list, the 15th player of my top 15 in January this year, is Laurent Talarge on a permanent deal from Aldershot. Now, his current deal does expire in the summer, I believe. It's either summer or next year, so you'll have a year left by then. Uh, but you've got the opportunity here, again, if you offer Aldershot the right money. Uh, now, he can score off his more favourable left foot, but he can score off his right as well. Let's not forget that. He always looks to play off the shoulder and make moves in behind. He's a very intelligent striker. He understands the game happening around him. He's very aware and intelligent of the tempo of the game and the and the current setup of the opposition and knows how to work it around. He's a powerful striker. He's got a lot of pace. He's a very hard-working player, very much a hard-working player. And for me, Talaj would be a fantastic uh, signing for the club. I think that at 22 as well, you've got the opportunity there to bring in a, a long-term striker. Does this mean that Miller, George Miller's time at the club could be coming to an end with this injury till the end of the season? It's hard to judge, go judge it when he's back from injury. But I think that Talaj would be a fantastic signing and a brilliant step up uh, in quality at the club to go alongside Ironside for when Fowl goes back from his loan at the end of the season. Fingers crossed if we've got it to the end of the season. Whether it gets recorded in January, we don't know. Uh, but I think that Talaj would be a fantastic permanent striker. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That is your January 2024 transfer window recruitment plan. 
That is the 15 players I've got. What did you think about that list? Some experience in there, some youth, some talent, some potential. Uh, comment down below your suggestions as well. We'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments down below. But for now, guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Enjoy New Year's Day. Of course, Rovers fans are against MK Dons at home right now as you're watching this. So up the Rovers. Let's win against MK Dons today. And ta for 